Sorry, that's principle number one. <laughs> principle number two is being violated by a couple people in the room. Because here's number two. You have to train people to a standard, not a modified verb. I'm not going to train you to operate safely. There's no such thing. To do that job thoroughly. There's no such thing. You have to use a standard to train people. So if, uh, it, is that right, Ed? Ed, how many times would you shuffle that deck, do you think? About three. How many times, Jason, are you going to shuffle it? About three to four. About three to four. That's a little different. How many times are you going to shuffle it, uh, James? Same thing. Three to four. Three to four, you think? Roger? Yeah. You guys really don't like to shuffle a lot, do you? It's good pleasure. Yeah. Oh, is that right? So how many times are you going to shuffle it? Well, it's not a new deck. Okay. So, so three about three or four. Now, three or four may not matter, but I'm going to tell you right now, casinos teach all their dealers seven. Oh, wow. The, and the reason is Absolutely. because... Random distribution tells that six is not enough and eight is too much, and it's a way of measuring their progress. You see, if I say shuffle that deck appropriately, you can't follow that. It's appropriate until I decide it's not. Now, that's like turn the shift over appropriately. It's appropriate until I say it's not. Uh, do that job safely. Safe until I decide it's not. You need a standard. If you're going to train somebody to open a valve, you better use a standard. You want them to do it slowly, it's an eighth of a turn, followed by a 20 second pause, eighth of a turn, followed by a 20 second pause. Otherwise, you could induce a hammer effect and all of us will suffer from it on the job site. So we don't tell people to do things slowly, we make a standard out of it. So I'm gonna give you the standard, I need you to shuffle that seven times. So principle number one and on shift training is you better know what they know before you start because you can't teach them anything if you don't know what they know. Principle number two, train them to a standard. And the very last principle is very important in con off. So on the job training, Ron, we're going to practice here in a second. Very important. Sounds like the uh, lunchroom over at WRPS. Just saying. I know. I can say that I was there too. So. Okay, now once you're done doing that job, your job is done. All you have to do is pass that deck to somebody else in your group. Now here's the third and final principle on on the job training. Even if you don't think you're a good trainer, first of all, remember you train to a standard. You can easily remember that. This job is done this way. Number two, ask them what they know before you start. Three is you need to demonstrate and then have them practice. Don't have them do the job with you at the same time because you can't pick their errors when they make them. I'm going to do it, then you're going to follow. So the person with that deck in their hand is going to hold it face down. Let me do the first step that you'll repeat here in a second. You will spell out in front of you, one card on top of another, the phrase pick me. Pick me for the game, pick me for the activity, pick me for the job. So P-I-C-K-M-E. Do exactly what I've done. Now, on the job training, I demonstrate, then you practice. So go ahead and do it. P I C K M E. No, face up. Thank you very much for asking, Chris. Face up. No, no, face down. Face down. Procedure for all of us. And number one pile right in front of you. One pile right in front of you. So if you look up here at the model. <laughs> Models hard to see. It's instructive. Yeah, okay, so right here, this is the little pile. Now, in some cases, we're going to have a magic trick. In one case, we're going to have a miracle. I'm just saying right now. <laughs> so this is the way that deck should look on the table. Are we betting money on this? Uh, no, I'm going to see if you can remember this. Now, take that E card, which is the top card you left on the table pile. Remember, pick me, ended with an E. Pick it up, memorize it, show everybody on your team you want to see that at the end of the trick. So get everybody to... No, that's right one. Good. Show that one. Everybody got it? Memorize that. Don't lose sight of the card. You'll lose the illusion of the trick. Put that card right back down where you found it on top of the table pile. Take the deck. That's the big one in your hand. Drop it face down as is on top of pick me. So big pile goes on pick me. Pass it to the next person. You did your job well. <laughs> now that person <laughs> is going to pick up the deck and they're going to spell out your first and last name. Like, I'll spell out Joe Westy without a space in it. You should be spelling out something different. So one card on top of another. Just spell out your first and last name. Mine would be... 
Yes, we're doing amazing. well so far. It's looking good. Well, that's a long name. All right. <laughs> now we're going to do a quality check. So we've got the first and last name there. That's yours. Got the deck in your hand. Going to change the job site conditions. Take the deck you dealt from and turn them face up. So the one you're dealing from, you're turning face up. Draw as is, face up, right down on top of your name. Just face up, right on top of your name. You guys are doing great. Pass that to the next person. Now that person is going to do what you saw two previous people do. So now you're a journeyman rather than an apprentice. And you're going to put one card on top of another, spelling out the first and last name of somebody really important to you. Siblings, significant others. Most people spell out their first line manager. I completely understand that. Uh, go ahead and spell out their first and last name. Top to bottom? Yeah, one card on top of another. It'll be face up when you do it. So think of who's really important to you. Then spell out their name. One card represents each letter. Okay. Is that first and last name or just first name? First and last name. Should be first and last name. Thank you for checking, though. I appreciate that. <laughs> Did he spell your name right? I just want to know. <laughs> yeah, you were a little concerned. I can see that. Okay, so now the quality check is their name is face up. Deck in your hand is face up. Go ahead and leave it as is. How you've been dealing from it? Just drop it right down on top of their name. So face up. Now pass that to the next person. Back to the real card, sharp. Now that person's going to spell out one card on top of another the street name you live on. So 32nd Avenue, you'd spell out T-H-I-R, finish the rest. If it's first street, F-I-R, and you wouldn't spell out street. We don't care about street, boulevards, or circles. Just spell out the street name. One card on top of another. Like the number two. T-W-O. Looks like you guys are doing very well. <laughs> Can everybody get their street name? Hold on. Okay. James is still going. George Washington. We good, James? Yeah. Good. Okay. Last quality check. Your street name is face up. Deck in your hand is face up. Take that deck, change the conditions, turn them face down, and drop them right on your street name. Now pass that to the next person. Here's where the magic begins and ends. Oh, oh, if you've yeah, done this right, oh, you follow the, the procedure. That's it. We <laughs> went it. Now, if you've done this right, you'll see that card again. If you didn't, here's who you blame because they touched the equipment last. That's what we do. We blame people who touch things last. So go ahead and tap that deck and get the card to where you want it. Got to have a tap. Now spell out the word magic. M A G I C. And then go ahead and. Take the E card off your deck, just like you did at the beginning. Next card should be the one that you want to see. So on your hand deck. So go ahead and show everybody on your team got it. if you got back there or not. So did you guys get it? Did you guys get it? Yeah. yeah. Then, then Brad, did your team get it? Okay, and you guys got it? Yep. Okay, good. So you have been well trained to do this job. So what the idea is? Now, now, yeah. now, now you, you can go home once you can repeat the trick flawlessly. <laughs> okay, I want to see when you're in a break. Now, here's the deal. Uh, have you been properly trained to do this operation? No. No, why not? I showed you how to do it. You passed the test. You got the outcome I wanted. Each of us has only done a piece of that. Okay, you may not understand the entire evolution. So you take three people out there to do OJT, you spend more time with one than you do on the two others, and then wonder why they can't get it. You don't have a performance standard you're teaching them to, you just remind them to do it safely and you can't figure out why they didn't do it. Oh, point is, is when you do on-the-job training, Con Ops says this, know what they need to know before you start. That's a lesson plan. In addition, you better know what they already know, otherwise there's no point. If they don't even know what a pump is, why are you teaching them how to disassemble one and put it back together? They need another class besides the one you got. And you better have a standard when you teach people. Otherwise, whatever you teach them may be your way of doing it. Remember peeling the banana? But that's not the way we want it done around here. Have you ever been trained by somebody who had a less than compliant way of doing the work? They, and they start with this. Now, the, what the procedure says is, but the way we do it is. You ever seen that happen? Yeah. And, see, and that's once in a while why we get into trouble. 
When it comes to training, there's no card trick. And by the way, magicians are the best at con ops compared to any other business people because they can't afford to be otherwise. You'll never pay twice to see a magician fail once. So they practice and they practice and they practice. And they have every contingency plan built into their head and system, not planning on you gaming up the works. When you're a person in the audience heckling them, they got a plan for you. But why? Because they're professional in their duties, and that means they don't stray from them. So even magicians know conduct of operations because it's the way they conduct themselves in their business. Guaranteed to get the card every time they want it. Now I've worked with engineers and managers who are not as dedicated to con ops. They go out to a job site and here's what they say. I don't know, give it a shot, see what happens. Uh, that would not be a good system. I'll hold my beer, a worse system. Hold hold that one down. <laughs> uh, but there are engineers who say, I don't know. Trial method. Yeah, see what, yeah, the well. trial method. Now in conduct of operations, we don't hope for the best, we plan for the best. 